recording? Will it stick? I think it sticks. <gasps> We're recording! Hello! Woohoo! <laughs> Howdy! Howdy! So this shall be Kyle's Nerva Writing Corner, Summer Edition. Take two. Yeah. Why take two? <laughs> because I am an idiot. <laughs> so we uh, recorded a glorious session, a very natural, impromptu, very, you know, it was glorious. And, uh, and naturally, as you, uh, when I started to organize the files and uh, get the upload going, I decided to delete the test footage bit, bits, as you do. And, Mistakes uh, were made! <laughs> and then, because in Linux, uh, when you have something in your trash bin, then the file system shows it in a sort of like bloated thingy. And I think my brain just went like, oh, it's, it's a bloaty, must empty. So I emptied it, as you do. <laughs> and then, then when I uploaded the video, I was like, wait, wait, why is it uploading so fast? Fuck. <laughs> And then I realized uh, I had. Uh, 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 only then did I figure out what had happened. You see, when we were recording, when we were testing, I was fiddling with the settings, so I changed the output fo folder. So the the video was not where I thought it would be. And then I got some uh, digital necromancy going, uh, <laughs> some file restore things flowing, and. <laughs> Let's not stop with the fuck ups there. Uh, as I was as I was setting up the recovery, I was I was kind of uh, well. Let's say it, it's summer. It's hot. My head was like oh. So when I was picking the settings, I thought that I was picking the folder it should look into, but actually I was setting the folder it should write into. So basically the first recovery dump went straight into the, not only to the same disk, but also to the same location where the uh, resurrection files would have been. So I'm, I'm thinking that I probably did all the damage during that first wipe. So after that I kept running a few more recovery rounds and I, I found a good deal of old video files uh, that I'm guessing is part of my brother's work uh, because it's uh, it's my brother's old laptop and he wiped it all clean before he handed it over to me and now I've resurrected all that <laughs> so it has been bizarre <laughs> anyway now we're, now we're back here now that I have uh, spent all this time uh, waffling on about uh, the digital necromancy uh, so what what was the stuff that we were actually talking about I can't remember anymore <laughs> <laughs> so basically um, oh I remember so this is the first writing corner chat in a while I think it's the first since April and there there have been reasons so what are your reasons I've been traveling around Europe in the super bus with a good friend of mine from Sardinia Claire massive shout outs to Claire the legend shout outs uh, thank you for putting up for me uh, putting up with me for <laughs> six seven weeks I think it was so you really are a champion. Nice work. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we went. We went all across. Uh, well, we went mostly across Europe. We went uh, from the Netherlands to Germany to the Czech Republic to v to Vienna, mm -hmm. Austria, Austria. Austria. Yes. Vienna is in Austria. And then, as we were on our way to Switzerland, the superbus decided to just break down. Uh, no! <laughs> just glorious betrayal. Um, uh, unfortunately, it was a ruptured fuel line, and every garage we took it to in Austria was just like, no, we're not doing it. Not, on. Mm. not something we do. No. Um, so, yeah. 
in the end we had to spend a night I think it was pretty much an entire day and night on the trains going from Austria uh, back to Amsterdam and at the same time there were some medical issues going on so we had to get back to somewhere where there was a walk-in doctor and Amsterdam's got like three of them just near mm. Central Station so they got tons of walk-in doctors we needed that for the medical um, so we spent all night on these trains and we had to transfer and we stayed at these really dodgy areas while we were transferring trains I thought at one point I was gonna die oh what was that <laughs> Uh, somebody has worn out the brakes, I guess. Get those fixed. That's important yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were on the trains and we stayed in one of these train stations that was like Pitsy times a thousand. It was really bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pitsy is a station local to me, so I think I'm allowed to make that comparison. Um, and uh, yeah, we got back to Amsterdam. And it was Claire's birthday, the day we got Aww. back to Amsterdam, after all these long, gruelling journeys that we'd had to make. Side um, note, Claire's birth birthday is a band in Estonia. <laughs> yeah. Claire's birthday? Yeah. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, spelled differently, but okay, carry on. Nice. I'll have to inform her of this. Um, Any time we went into Starbucks, and she was like, they were like, what's your name? And she was like, Claire. They'd, ne they'd always write it C-L-A-I-R-E. Mm. They wouldn't do it as expected, which is fair enough, I suppose. Um, so yeah, we got back to Amsterdam, Claire's birthday, we got back to the hotel, and they gave her a voucher for free drinks because it was her birthday. Aww. And it, we, we managed to get to the hotel before 10 o'clock. So I went outside and got on the phone to my dad to say, oh, we've, we've organised hotels, we've managed to sort everything out. And then about 10 minutes later, Claire comes out to me and she says, oh, I tried to redeem my, my voucher but it's apparently it's too early in the morning for sex on the beach which is like a proper hardcore <laughs> cocktail you know what I mean we're there at like 10 o'clock in the morning trying to order one and the guy at the counter's just like no I'm afraid I can't so <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately we never got to use the drink totally Aww. which is a bit of a shame but it, it was a funny story and then we traipsed all our bags or all our luggage from the hotel to the station the next morning at like 6 o'clock and then we got on the we got to the airport, got on the plane, got back to the UK. But the super bus was still in Austria. So we had to hire a company to go and collect it. And that was a nightmare. That took about a week and a half. Um, and currently the super bus is sitting on the driveway and it doesn't start. It goes whoop, 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 and just doesn't it start. Insert sad piano music here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. So that's where I've been for the last forever. Uh, so yeah, that's... Yeah. yeah. So uh, my forever starts uh, in May as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna add something that I didn't have in the original video. Is that during May I was busy as fuck because uh, because I was doing some stuff for the Latvians. So the the. The bulk of the project hit in May and, and June and there was a release in June and this reminds me I have to contact my project manager and, and ask, about, uh, ask about my invoice organization because that's always a good thing to remember that some people owe you some money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so the, the, the worst busy time was over mid-June then uh, by the end of the June I was done with our glorious translation task and then and then and then and then <laughs> and then uh, last okay now now already like last last but let's pretend last week before last week uh, I went to the local fucking uh, I went to the local uh, sci-fi convention, conveniently called Estcon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you're think, uh, if you're sort of imagining a uh, an exhibition hall and booths and all that, forget, forget all that. It, it's it's more like it's an Estonian thing, more like summer camp and uh, sauna and uh, and. Uh, 
sun and summer and expedition and all that. So I don't, I don't know if it's uh, if it's all the actual expedition uh, expedition brain that kicked in, or if I just happened to talk to the right people. But uh, long story short, I had great time. Uh, was interesting. I uh, I think I don't think I I had one boring conversation during the whole weekend. There was sun, there was sauna, there was beer. Uh, I had a little tent with me, so I had uh, I had plenty of uh, privacy. Uh, it was really warm. Thing is, uh, student summer is an unpredictable beast so during this time of the year we have had a lot of sun exposure we're like you know we're, we're tilted to, tilted towards the sun so we we do get the uh, heat feedback but at the same time the heat feedback also heats up the arctic ocean which gets all the water in the air so you can you can never know for sure if you if you get a heat wave or if you get like proper rain wave and uh, as I understand, every year before this one, uh, Estcon has had some cold and rain and all that. And naturally, since the weather is unpredictable, you have to be ready for whatever. So uh, you have to pack your you have to pack your scuba gear and your <laughs> rain gear and your snow gear because if you're gonna be away from home for three days. You have to be ready for whatever. So I actually got a new uh, new rucksack uh, uh, for the for the occasion, which was nice. <laughs> but the rucksack was bigger than uh, than I had uh, planned. So the one that I actually wanted uh, ran out. So I got a bigger one, which means bigger rucksack, more shit. <laughs> so I had to be very careful not to not to pack too much. But uh, luckily. Uh, in the end, it turned out that uh, I was able to find somebody who was driving there from Tartu. So I, di I didn't have to do any train adventures. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I also got back from there uh, with one of the organizers' cars. So it was very, I, I got really lucky with the transport. Oh, oh nice. and, and uh, while there, uh, they had held a little. Uh, word contest for film genres and uh, and I was among the runner-ups so two of my <laughs> two of my uh, my suggestions were in the runner-up circle which means uh, I got a, a nice certificate uh, for for the efforts and also books so just like in the original video, I did not bring any of the loot uh, down here. Everything <laughs> is up in my room, but basically uh, I got a big reference book uh, with the Estonian etymology, which is like right up my alley. <laughs> and also it's very, very uh, sort of uh, very in tune with the whole word invention contest. Uh, then for the other word, I uh, I got to pick between different books, so I, I picked one of the uh, more recent Estonian sci-fi books, which I have already read. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, also there was a quiz, a trivia quiz on site, which I also attended, for which I also grabbed a book, and then I also bought one book. So basically, I, I came back with a, with a load of books. <laughs> The hole, like, yes. you got all the loot. Yeah, I will. I will show them. Show them uh, another time when we're recording indoors. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be cool. Yeah. You did it. Did it. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, and as a result of the of the convention, well. When you're on a convention, you talk to people, you establish contacts. So uh, after that, I have actually been to one of the uh, writing sci-fi writing workshops uh, right here in my hometown. So that that was a win. And there will be another one this week. So 
not tomorrow, but the day after tomorrow, uh, I'm gonna carry on with my story. So very that's cool. that that's that was a very uh, very nice development. Talking of working on stories, um, mm -hmm. I may have been away on holiday or not holiday, touring, <laughs> travel, uh, journey. Yeah, I, may, I may have been, I may have been on a glorious journey, mm -hmm. um, but I was still doing work. I got a bunch of outrunner stories written, like short stories, mm -hmm. and uh, got back to the UK and I started writing on sort of like everything that the trip involved and all that sort of thing. Um, we had a conversation the other day, I don't know if it was in the recording, but we had a conversation the other day about the logistics of campsites and how you have to take things like activities into account, so if there's loads of activities, I, I it's don't like think a family. Yeah, I don't think that was on camera, I think uh, we just mentioned that yeah. uh, in one of the casual talks. So, yeah, I think stuff like that, a lot of that stuff's going in there. Um, mm -hmm. Like, like how how different it is ordering a cup of tea on the continent ha than it is to, in the UK. Just little things like that. Continent. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, can I have some milk, please. Um, so yeah, all that stuff's going in there, and uh, yeah, it's just little bits and pieces like that. And I'm also working on uh, on another sci-fi story, but I'm not. I, it's one of those finish it jobs. Hmm. So, it's, I've set myself a challenge, I'm going to finish this challenge. It's one of those ones that's a bit personality that I tried writing it like five or six times across the last year and the, the other day I sat down and started writing it and it just stuck, like Aww. things started working. I made some changes to some of the characters and what their storyline was and yeah, it really sticks now. <laughs> oh, uh, in a good way? Yeah. Ah, yeah. ah okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, same. I uh, yep. Usually when I get to about chapter four or five in certain stories, I can tell whether or not they're working. Mm. Um, so uh, there's a lot of split personality twos that go up to like chapter four or five. And then it's like, oh no, I, I can do this better. I'm going to restart and do it better. And then, yeah, it's sometimes the same way I play city builders. It's like, oh, I can start this again and, mm -hmm. and it will, I can make it much better and it'll be fine. And then you start again and then you're like, oh, I can do this much better again. Yeah, um, yeah, I need to, it's like in some games slash stories, you can sort of step back, take back a few steps and, and take a forking path. But in some, in some cases, like, yeah, I, got, I, I need to reset the starting conditions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I do that quite a lot, actually. But then you get to ones like the one I'm writing now. And it just blasts mm. through chapter five and six, and it's on its way. Mm. It's got a structure. It's got an ending. It knows what's mm -hmm. going on. I've just got to write the damn thing. Uh, so I'm working. Oh, keyboard down. But I am working. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's good when you've got the the itch, and you have to have the laptop mm -hmm. with you at all times. But I am going to put that over there now because we are doing things. I should also apologise to the viewers. I've had my legs up. I've had my legs up and you've seen my knobbly knees um, that's not wow. all the horror though I'm afraid look at these shorts <laughs> look at these shorts I'm such a supermodel shake it <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah man the, inter the internet us. shall thank you yeah <laughs> um, ladies <laughs> yes <laughs> um, these were a purchase in Hamburg. We had to find the cheapest swimming shorts we could find, and as you can probably tell, these were very cheap. Uh, possibly about five or six euros. Mm -hmm. Or fifth? No, fifteen sounds too expensive. I wouldn't have spent that on swimming yeah. shorts. So, yeah. Five, five sounds but a lot. In this right. weather. In this weather. Uh, Forty-two percent humidity at thirty-four degrees. I think I'm allowed to throw fashion out the window. The top half looks acceptable. Top half looks okay. Presentable. <laughs> Bus business up, party down. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm on it, man. Complete the look. <laughs> party in the front. Oh no, what is it? Business in the front, party in the rear. Party in the back. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
fully behind that. So yeah. Yeah, speak, uh, yeah. Speaking of stories, uh, I I think I won't uh, I won't uh, illuminate anything about uh, the one that I'm working on much either because well I I intend to finish it for for the upcoming workshop, but basically the the, the framing of it was that we were uh, were given like mm, the current prompt is that we're bouncing off of certain uh, local folklore uh, writings so it's like I'm, I'm not uh, I'm not writing it from the scratch I'm actually retelling a, a known story which is I'm guessing that for me that's pretty good practice because for me the coming up from scratch and writing a story from scratch to the end is uh, is not an easy process or I, I don't think I've, I've even done it at all. I've, I always work from something. But yeah, uh, I, I have I have about about half of it uh, written down as text and uh, and the rest as an outline. And the idea is actually to uh, I, I think the goal is that when you're when you're in the workshop, you try to write your thing from start to finish so that it has a beginning, a middle and an end but uh, but of course because I work so slow uh, I and, and I figured out exactly what what I want to be where I just left some of the stuff blank and so like yeah no, I'll, I'll, fi I'll finish it at home <laughs> <laughs> which was very sneaky of course but but then again I, I knew where, what I was going to do so now I just have to do it Easy. <laughs> the, the, the easy part, of uh -huh. course. <laughs> <laughs> after a while, uh, the writing course that I do with Terry, after a while it just got to the point where one of us wrote down everything mm. that had been assigned to us and would just email it to everybody else. Mm. And from there it was just like, sweet. Okay, although occasionally Terry would give out individual tasks mm. Like, so there'd be an overarching task. Uh -huh. that each one of you would have a separate uh, facet. Is facet the right word? You'd have a separate. F you'd each have an individual task mm -hmm. relating to the bigger mm -hmm. task that you had to do. So in your case, uh, or similar to your case, we'd get homework on like nursery rhymes and old mm -hmm. tales mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And so one of us would get like Red Riding Hood, mm -hmm. another one would get like. Uh, Humpty Dumpty and another one, Jack and Jill, you know, that yeah, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, that's a, the best way we figured out. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a very similar case, except in uh, in our case it's not the, uh, like, it's it's not a learning environment so much as it is practice environment. Mm. And, that's uh, really cool. And in the end, the, the stories that do uh, swim <laughs> Uh, will end up in the uh, in the web magazine. So I think I think the the batch that uh, that's worked on currently is destined for December's issue. Oh, nice. But, but that's that's like hearsay. That's uh, I'm just repeating. <laughs> I'm just repeating back what I heard. Mm. Right. Uh, I'm my my mug is is like at the third. So I think uh, we should start wrapping up our glorious reshoot and uh, recap. Da, 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 da. Okay, brain fart. Uh, so the general general state of things. What are we doing? What are we reading? What are we playing? Uh, I have been playing Sonic Mania Plus. <laughs> And it is excellent. I know the name of the squirrel now. Ray. The squirrel's name is Ray. You've got a fox called Tails, a hedgehog called Sonic, an echidna called Knuckles, a something or other, I think he's like an armadillo or something. Mighty. Is he an armadillo? I don't know what he is. Mighty, the armadillo. All of these are great names, speak to character. Ray the, the squirrel. <laughs> What happened there? <laughs> maybe, maybe, it's, drunk about me. maybe it's something different in Japanese. Yeah, possibly. 
Uh, um, funny, funny story. We had uh, one of the trivia quiz questions was uh, what feature does the Fox and Sonic have that normal foxes don't have and humans also don't have? So uh, neither me nor my uh, teammate knew the answer, but we figured out that, uh, the multiple tails. I hope we did get the point for this because the correct answer is two tails but uh, uh, I started writing double tails but then I figured uh, I could be more vague and wrote <laughs> multiple tails. <laughs> but, Fair enough. Yeah, but I, 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 think, I think we did get some points for that. Nice. Uh, um, what, what have you been playing? <laughs> Stasis! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so yeah, I've been... Uh, I think I started before Westcon. Or, or, or did I? Uh, I, I, so. I, I, haven't, I haven't been playing it for too long. And I actually, I finished it the other night. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> some, of, some of my predictions... So basically, Stasis, it is very gory, very spla splishy, splishy, splashy... Uh, all sorts of uh, bodily horrors thrown at you, isometric point, point so. and click. Yeah, and uh, and uh, there was a bit of a let's say my my playthrough is quite dissonant from the tone that I think the game is aiming at. <laughs> like they they are aiming at this sort of serious horror and tragedy and I like. <laughs> 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 also, uh, I was I was sort of anticipating the uh, the story to take uh, certain turns, and at some point I was overthinking it. So the story is a little bit more straightforward and more simple than I was uh, than I was building up to. So I, I wouldn't say I'm disappointed, but uh, but I think that's. That's why I didn't take all the tragedy, tragedy and bloodshed too seriously because I'm like, ah, there's more to it anyway. <laughs> 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 but uh, regarding one of the uh, one of the people who interacts with the uh, protagonist, protagonist, <laughs> <laughs> protagonist, <laughs> uh, my, let's say I had a free prong theory that she will either be evil she will uh, get killed uh, or she will be related to the uh, uh, protagonist uh, <laughs> so let's say two two of those three were correct i'm not saying which ones but you're not going to say which ones which mm -hmm. is fair enough Ooh, dun, dun, dun. yeah cliffhangers <laughs> nice. so yeah but but yeah because i have already finished the game uh, some of the tension is gone so i'm like uh, I have to I have to work very hard to maintain the mystery. Uh, hmm. And also I have been playing of course uh, uh, Stalker Lost Alpha developers cut test versions and uh, the the build that is currently in the works uh, is one point Four oh 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 seven. I never know how many O's there are. <laughs> that's that's a running gag. Uh, and uh, and uh, as as we speak, the next uh, test build is uh, is being uploaded. So I will I will probably have to start the new game tonight or, or or something like that. That's that's the that that's the sort of testers dilemma how far uh, will you will you sort of try to hurry up and get as far as you can in the game and sort of binge on it or take it easy because soon enough there will be a new build anyway so we will have to start from from scratch again but uh, so there's there are there are certain key areas that you usually will you will reach those key areas and then uh, a new build will come along and you have to start over. But of course, uh, this also leads to the situation that the beginning of the game is really thoroughly tested through, but the end part not so much. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm even considering to uh, teaming up with uh, 
with some of the other testers so that some people who will play through something faster uh, I, I will beg for, for their save game so that I can start from farther in so that I can actually you know observe the, the stuff farther in the game because uh, if you start the same thing over and over and over again then uh, on one hand you will start taking shortcuts so you're not trying uh, trying out or trying through certain things that you should and on the other hand uh, your perception is also getting sort of like okay certain things get very easy certain things get very very annoying and certain things you don't you don't uh, pick up on anymore because you're so used to them uh, oh, uh, we spoke about games. What are you, what are you reading? Uh, while I was away on holiday, uh, I was reading Surviving the Evacuation by Frank Tyrrell. And I've said that so many times now, I'm actually remembering it. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, I read the first three books of his series, they're great. It's a zombie survival story, and I don't usually go in for zombie survival stories, but these ones are great. It's about uh, a survivor who was left, he, he broke his leg, or his leg got broken, and he was forced to remain in London mm -hmm. while everybody else around him was evacuating, <laughs> and by the time he was able to move again, uh, the world was not what it was before, let's say. Dun, dun, dun. So, yeah, that was a really interesting book, and it's written from the perspective of, like, he writes a diary, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, it's really good. And I like how... Uh, other characters in the story sometimes read his diary and sort of question him about it. It's mm. a nice, there's like a nice double layer going on there, it's really cool. Um, so that was interesting. And I'm sure I was reading something else as well. Uh, yeah, there, there, there was something. You said it, but I don't remember. Let me have a look. Uh, Kindle Books. I read The Fall, uh, but I think you'd be a better uh, speaker of that than I uh, would. Oh, yeah, the past the Jackson virus. Yeah. <laughs> the Australian uh, Australian zombie plague. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did, while we were in Amsterdam, I, uh, or while we were in, I think it was Groningen actually, we went into a charity shop. Oh mm -hmm. no, okay, so the first store we went into was an antique bookshop and I picked up a copy of A Bridge Too Far, which is a German, it's an English World War II story about uh, getting to, I think it was the bridge in Arnhem and how it was just too, it was too much. They took mm. as many bridges as they could and then they got to this one bridge and it was just impossible for them to take, it was a real struggle. So I got that, I haven't finished reading it yet, thus my... Um, inability to properly properly give a description of it um, but uh, I got that and then we went to another bookstore in Groningen where it was much cheaper because they sold books by weight so you could buy like five kilos of books for 50 <laughs> cents which is an amazing way of doing it I recommend uh, all charity shops do it this way you shift a load of books it's awesome um, so yeah, I picked that up in there. So yeah, I've just been reading bits and pieces here, and I picked up. A, I have intentions of learning the glorious Czech language. Uh, glorious which I'm is very glorious. It's uh, a pleasure to listen to. Um, I bought a copy of The Color of Magic by Terry Pratchett. Ooh. I bought it in the Czech version because I've got the English version. And I tried getting it in the but that didn't work. Um, so I'm familiar with the source material. And I'm mm -hmm. going to read Czech Colour of Magic, which I think will be quite interesting. There you go. So, uh, in the meantime, I manoeuvred away from the sun. <laughs> yeah, I can I, see you had your hands up at some <laughs> point. So. I didn't think Ripen that through. The, uh, while, while we were speaking, the sun sort of came out from behind the spruce. Well, what have you been reading? Oh, shit ton of things, actually. So, first off, uh, straight out of Estcon, I read one uh, zombie novella. Uh, 
by a person I know, and uh, and she write and the uh, uh, all the adventures take take place in locations I know. So that was a sort of very very personal sort of uh, uh, thing, and uh, and also the one of the one of the award books, uh, which is kind of a I think it's a little bit cyberpunk, a little bit alternate history. Uh, a little bit uh, techno thriller. So, uh, in the meantime, uh, when we when we recorded our first take, I I think I hadn't even started it, and now I've read it. <laughs> 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 and uh, and then I still uh, I still have a shit ton of stuff that I'm in the middle of. So one is another Estonian book. And a, a side note is that I've been consciously trying to uh, read uh, more Estonian again and sort of like read consciously and, and read different sources because when I started the translating Seeker I felt like my sort of written language depository was a bit thin. So I immediately scrambled to watch more uh, TV shows and, and read more more books and so on. So I've been reading. Uh, I've been reading this uh, diary from uh, from before uh, from between two world wars that also takes place uh, in my hometown and. Uh, the lady writing the diary uh, why would you <laughs> I, I can't even tell if it was a train or, or, a, or a truck it was pretty far away though so uh, the diary uh, the diary writer uh, is the wife of one of the Estonian well-known writers and uh, as I understand from the diary, she wasn't a writer herself, but she was doing some editing and uh, you know all the write writer adjacent uh, stuff. And uh, there's a ton of you know wh when you when you move around in the in the circles of creative people, all, all the gossip and all the sort of everyday stuff and it's, it's, it's fascinating reading. And, uh, and then I'm still in the middle of uh, Ian MacDonald's uh, Luna the New Moon and I think I've, I've said it somewhere before that uh, I, really, I really like it but because it is, uh, it is so rich and so layered uh, I, I want to read it in uh, short bursts so that I don't, uh, uh, so, so that I, I, I have time to let the material sink in and you know to process it properly. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to rush through it. So that's why it's taking uh, more time than some uh, more lightweight book might take. So there. Oh, nice. oh, 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 and also uh, recently. Uh, I reread uh, our friend Carl's uh, Stalker fanfic, uh, which is now available on his website. Link shall be below, or else. <laughs> so now I remember this. This is this is where we ended uh, the original uh, recording. Is that we have to start putting all the all the links and doodads in the description. So this sh this shall be the reminder to do so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Um, there was one other thing I was reading as well. Um, sorry for extra work. Um, <laughs> but um, oh, what's his name? Hang on, Jack Campbell. Ah, oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Jack Campbell released another book oh. uh, while I was away on holiday. Uh, it's part of the prequel series, mm. uh, Lost Fleet. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's called Genesis Stars. I'm not going to move my side mm. to find out. Um, I think it's called Genesis or Genesis Stars. And it's the second book in the series. And it's, and it's good fun. Mm. It's more of the same. You know what you're getting with Jack Campbell. But at the same time, it's still an interesting story. And the 
the universe that story mm -hmm. exists in is really fascinating as well. So, yeah, if you're into sci-fi, I recommend it. Ships, space, all that. All that good stuff. Just nice, simple military sci-fi mm -hmm. in space. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, I think we can all get behind, surely. Surely. Yeah. That's all I got, man. Yeah, me too. Also, my legs are going to sleep. So, let's wrap this up again <laughs> <laughs> oh so this has been uh, the very summer very very summer summer uh, writing quarter chat we might make some more soon we are very slowly trying to get back into the uh, pre-work mode ish <laughs> Get there. Yeah. No, no pressure or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, all the all the links and do that shall shall be there one day. And I guess thank you very much for watching. Visit us again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Read our shit. <laughs> Visit, visit the website. <laughs> yes, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching. And stop. Break.